Today on Great Places Seen, we travel to the heart of Washington, D.C. and take in the annual Cherry Blossom Festival along with other events to experience. And of course, see the famous cherry trees at their peak as we take in all their splendor, find some of the best vantage points, and discover true hidden living history. Come along for the ride. Spring in Washington, D.C. is magical. Everywhere you look, something is in bloom, either on branches or from the ground. One of the most colorful stops is easy to find. The Floral Library on Independence Avenue at the northeast end of the Tidal Basin is packed with varieties of tulips, some common, some not so much, all beautiful, and you're sure to find a lot of admirers. The annual Cherry Blossom Festival runs about a month each year in March and April. But for two weeks, the cherry trees themselves are the star attraction. As warm sun pushes the tight red buds to burst open with bright pink and white hues. The Tidal Basin is the historic focal point, where trees that were gifted by Japan in 1912 dazzle all who walk by. There's more about those first trees a little bit later. Despite throngs of visitors, this northern edge of the Tidal Basin is one of my favorite places, as is the area across the street, from the old Japanese lantern to the Martin Luther King Memorial. It's ground zero for the DC cherry trees, but yet with enough room even at the busiest of times. The South Rim has its charm too. This area also attracts a lot of local attention. Hey, you have to have a good backdrop for your stand-up, right? And wear some pink. Or not. Most visitors only see the blossoms in full. Few are able to take in the amazing transformation, as each year, weather dictates when the tiny flowers actually appear. And with them, the instant blossom of crowded sidewalks and roads, Navigating the narrow area can be a day-long challenge. The best times are at sunrise and during the hour before sunset. Nothing beats walking or a bicycle. At peak bloom, the infamous DC traffic gridlock can strand people for hours. Into the night, 
and back the next day. At least you can still enjoy this beauty while you're waiting. Whether in traffic or moving about, be sure to take a peek skyward. Springtime kite flying is a tradition here, and you may see a certain nearby resident skip the crowds for a bird's eye view. Hey, you can't visit DC without seeing at least one official helicopter. The DC Wharf has plenty of food, festivities, and fun. You might find some green tea. Ooh, that's really green. That's pretty good. The Cherry Blossom Festival has its own beer garden and performances. And at the wharf, it's also quite the display of traditional talents. Jumping jacks. <laughs> may not think there's much to see overnight, but you'll find fountains and lights, fireworks that look like blossoming trees, Even the bridges are lit in pink, although your camera might not see it that way. You'll find areas where the cherry blossoms are backlit by streetlights, with almost no one around. It's a great quiet time to see them. Another of my favorite areas is adjacent to the Tidal Basin. East Potomac Park is a tree-lined treat. Hundreds of trees are along the route. In several areas from either side extend floral canopies as you pass through an extraordinary display for what seems miles long. Well, actually it is about three miles.
Like other areas, if you're arriving by car, your best times are sunrise and about an hour before sunset, although earlier is likely better. Here, close-up viewing is often much easier. Along the tidal basin, iconic views abound, with endless photo opportunities in true DC fashion. You'll also find many of the oldest trees from Japan. Each of the gnarled, twisted trunks give them away, all unique, and proudly support large, stately branches that have revealed their beauty for more than a century. They are mostly found on either side of the Martin Luther King Memorial. scene is repeated in a quiet, unassuming location nearby. As the story goes, the original shipment of cherry trees from Japan was found to be infested and diseased. The National Park Service was forced to destroy them. Japan in turn sent a second shipment to replace its initial gift. The older trees at the tidal basin are the second group of trees, contrary to what you may overhear tour guides telling visitors. In their wisdom, National Park Service workers at the time felt a handful of trees from the original first shipment were able to be preserved. To ensure they were not wrong, these first trees were planted in a location far enough away to protect the second batch of trees. In true Washington style, the Park Service has never confirmed nor denied the story. Well, I'm not revealing the location, although it's probably not too difficult to figure out where these trees are. The old grove is simply grand. These stately, magnificent wonders have literally stood the test of time. With minimal maintenance, they arguably have flourished better than if they had been planted along the tidal basin. The old grove stands in plain sight, but absent from the throngs who circle all the others. It's a peaceful location for the oldest of the gifted DC cherry trees. They stand in virtual anonymity, enough off the beaten path that trees in the foreground get all the attention, thereby protecting the mighty giants. Even when seen, no one seems to pay attention or consider this amazing part of history embodied here. The old grove has stood for most of the second half of this country's existence, standing as a resolute witness to incredible changes in progress, all the while displaying its beauty eons in the making. Standing in their presence, you can't help but silently admire them, perhaps for hours at a time.
These old trees are not shy to reveal their true colors. Visiting during a warm sunny day, the flowers appear a light whitish pink. If you return during a cloudy or damp day, the color deepens to a richer shade of pink. To fully appreciate these trees, you just have to visit several times. After about two, perhaps three weeks, the petals begin to fall, covering the ground like a light snowfall. Some years a storm will blow through and abruptly strip the flowers away. Other times, only a few days are needed for the leaves to take over and present their summer appearance. Other locations have other varieties. If you miss the big show, well, you have some time to enjoy the encore. As the leaves emerge, the crowds and traffic disappear with the blossoms, all certain to return in a year's time. This truly is a great place to be seen.